Hello all performers, I hope this finds you well. Wanted to record this quick video for you because just last week I had probably the most significant and the most meaningful speaking engagement I think I've ever had in my speaking career. Um, other than maybe speaking for all of the coaches, all of the general managers for all of the Minnesota professional sports teams, and then having them actually win a championship afterwards, which will never happen. Uh, I can't imagine having a more impactful and a more meaningful speaking engagement in my career. And it was for an organization called League of Minnesota Cities. And that might not mean anything to you, but being someone that was born and raised in Minnesota and specifically small town, Albany, Minnesota, what League of Minnesota Cities is, is it's an organization of elected and appointed city officials all across the state of Minnesota. And as someone that even though I may live a good chunk of my time away from Minnesota, someone that will always call Minnesota home, um, I just can't imagine having a more significant speaking engagement because these people really truly are the ones that fundamentally shape and are shaping not just what's happening in Minnesota, but also the future of Minnesota as well. And this actually isn't necessarily a story about me at all, but it's a story about how I will sometimes get asked the question, like, Scott, how did you transform your speaking business? Or how did you get to this point that you're the one that's speaking for 500 plus elected and appointed city officials? Like, what did you do? And I say, well, it wasn't one earth shattering or light bulb moment that all of a sudden made that happen. It was literally just a series of small steps done repeatedly over time that ended up getting me to this place where I'm the one that's doing this closing keynote in Duluth, Minnesota for these powerful people that are fundamentally shaping Minnesota. And when I look at this, it is the same way that we accomplish and we achieve anything in our personal, professional, or athletic lives. And I still remember going back to when I first started my speaking career. What I literally did is I spoke for a lot of different rotary clubs and a lot of different things. What you're seeing on the screen is a picture of me speaking for, I think it was Chan Hassan Rotary Club. Uh, and I still remember, this wasn't Chan Hassan, but I still remember about five or six years ago driving, it was January. And I was driving to River Falls, Wisconsin. So I was driving across the border and it was it was going to morning engagement. So I think I was speaking at 730 and it was probably 630 a.m. And of course, it's freezing cold because it's Minnesota in January. And I'm going to speak in a church basement for a group of probably 12 to 15 people unpaid. The only thing I got was a meal out of the deal. And I remember just thinking to myself when I'm driving there in January in the dark, when it's cold, like, is this really what I'm doing? Like, is this, is this really? And I'm not at all diminishing like rotary clubs or smaller groups or anything else because I still love speaking to them when I have the opportunity. But I just remember thinking, my God, is this really the way that it's supposed to be? Like, should it be this hard and do I really need to start this small to be able to kind of reach the next level, whatever that looks like? And the answer is absolutely yes, you do. And the way that I always looked at it was from the athletic perspective of if I want to get better as a speaker, I don't know another way to actually get better at something without doing that something. So the way that you get better at it is by putting in the reps, whatever the reps are are for you and whatever it is that you are eventually looking to achieve or looking to accomplish. And I think the interesting part of that is what I've found with people that I've worked with, not just on a one-on-one -on -one coaching level, but otherwise, is it's not so much that they are afraid to necessarily put in the reps and to do that part of it, but it's their unwillingness to want to start small and how they're going to come across in that starting small and what they're going to look like to others. So for me, it's like, wow, okay, I'm supposed to present myself as this polished, like buttoned up speaker and I'm the one speaking for an unpaid engagement for 12 to 15 people in a, in a church basement. I don't wanna come across that way for other people. Or you might have something where you say, well, I'm not willing to legitimately start small 
at square one, knowing that if I continue to do those things will eventually lead me to square whatever where you want to be. We have that protective part of our ego or otherwise that we don't want to look like we're bad at something. We don't want to look like we're actually starting small. So we end up never starting. And I think when we look at it through that mentality, it's really truly the epitome, I think, of a, of a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. And what I always tried to say to myself and what I would encourage you to do if you find that maybe you're struggling to start or, or you don't want to be the one that's perhaps seen as starting small is don't focus on where you're starting. Focus on where you're going. And I think I knew intrinsically. I didn't know that I was going to be the guy doing the closing keynote for League of Minnesota Cities for all these officials. But I did, I think intrinsically and maybe intuitively know that if I continue to put in the reps, it will end up amounting to something. And I'm not afraid to start small because it's not about me starting here and I don't care where I'm at right now. What I really care about is where I'm going. And I hope that part of it serves you because I've just seen it hold so many people back from even putting their their first foot and their best foot forward and getting started on something that can end up really being meaningful and impactful in their lives um, simply because they don't want to start small and they don't want to come across that way to others. So I hope this video serves you. Uh, I hope you are outperforming in your personal, professional, and athletic life. And I hope you have a great 4th of July. Take care. Keep outperforming.